Today, the October mortgage stress results. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. We've completed our October 2018 mortgage stress analysis and today we discuss the results. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon programme where you can support our ability to, to make great content. Here is the link. The latest RBA data on household income to June reached a new high of 190.5 and this high debt level helped to explain the fact that mortgage stress continues to rise. Having crossed the 1 million household Rubicon last month across Australia, now more than 1 million and 8,000 households across Australia are estimated now to be in mortgage stress compared with 1 million and 3,000 last month. This equates to 30.7% of owner-occupied borrowing households, and in addition, more than 22,000 of these are in severe stress. We estimate that more than 61,000 households risk their default in the next 12 months, and we continue to see the impact of flat wage growth, rising living costs, and higher real mortgage rates. Bank losses are likely to rise a little ahead. Our analysis uses the DFA core market model, which combines information from our 52,000 household surveys, public data from RBA, ABS and APRA, and private data from lenders and aggregators. The data is current to the end of October 2018. And we analyse household cash flows based on real incomes, outgoings and mortgage repayments, rather than using an arbitrary 30% of income. Households are defined as stressed when the net income or cash flow does not cover ongoing costs. They may or may not have access to other available assets, and some have paid ahead, but households in mild stress have little leeway in their cash flows, whereas those in severe stress are unable to meet repayments from current income. In both cases, households manage this deficit by cutting back on spending, putting more on credit cards, and seeking to refinance, restructure, or sell their home. Those in severe stress are more likely to be seeking hardship assistance and are often forced to sell. This rise in stress, which has continued for the past six years, should be of no surprise at all. Continued rises in living costs, noticeably childcare, school fees and fuel, whilst real incomes continue to fall and underemployment is causing significant pain. Many are dipping into savings to support their finances. Indeed, the fact that significant numbers of households have had their potential borrowing power crimped by lending standards belatedly being tightened and are therefore mortgage prisoners is significant. More than 40% of those seeking to refinance are now having difficulty. And this is strongly aligned to those who have registered as stressed. These are households urgently trying to reduce their monthly outgoings. The problem of default extends our mortgage stress analysis by overlaying economic indicators such as employment, future wage growth and CPI changes. And our core market model also examines the potential of portfolio risk of loss in basis points and value terms. Losses are likely to be higher among more affluent households contrary to the popular belief that affluent households are well protected. This is shown in the segment analysis where some more wealthy households are really up against it. Regional analysis shows that New South Wales had 272,536 households in stress, compared with 276,152 last month. Victoria had 281,922, compared with 276,926 last month. Queensland had 178,015, compared with 176,528 last month and Western Australia had 132,827 compared with 132,700 last month. The probability of default over the next 12-month rose, with around 11,630 in Western Australia, around 11,300 in Queensland, 15,200 in Victoria, and 16,200 in New South Wales. The largest financial losses relating to bank write-offs reside in New South Wales at $1.1 billion from owner-occupied borrowers, Victoria at $1.47 billion from owner-occupied borrowers, although losses are likely to be highest in Western Australia at 3.6 basis points, which equates to over $1 billion from owner-occupied borrowers. Turning to the postcodes with the largest count of households in stress, fifth was Melbourne suburb Berwick and Harkaway, 3806, 
with 5,267 households in stress and 143 risking default. In fourth place is Toowoomba and the surrounding areas in Queensland, 4350, with 6,437 households in stress and 256 risking default. Next, in third place, is Campbelltown in New South Wales, 2560, with 6,781 households in stress and 110 risking default. In second place is Tapping and the surrounding areas in Western Australia, 6065, with 7,409 households in stress and 298 risking default. And in first place, the postcode with the largest number of households in mortgage stress this month is the area around Chipping Norton and Liverpool, 2170, with 7,732 households in stress and 116 risking default. As always, it's worth saying that given flat incomes and rising costs and some mortgage rate rises, the pressure will continue and falling home prices will make things worse. Many people do not keep a cash flow, so they do not know their financial position. Drawing one up is the first step and ASIC has some excellent advice on their Money Smart website. And the other point to make is, if you are in financial distress, you should talk to your lender. They do have an obligation to help in cases of hardship. The worst strategy is simply to ignore the issue and hope it will go away. But in my experience, this is unlikely. We will update the data again next month. Finally, a quick reminder, our next live Q&A session is now scheduled for the 20th of November at 8pm Sydney time. You can schedule a reminder by using the YouTube link and join in the live discussion or send a question in beforehand. And if previous sessions are any guide, it should be a lively event. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North of Principal Institute of Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.